Hey guys, welcome back to Hands On Channel. Uh, today, uh, we're continuing on with this new project I've just picked up. Uh, if you've watched that first video, I kind of explained how I got into this deal and what my reasoning was for doing it. Uh, but I bought this vehicle, or this uh, ATV, not running. So I've got my work cut out for me here. Uh, it's, I'm thinking it's a fuel issue or possibly a uh, carburetor related issue. Uh, but anyways, I'm fixing to tear into this thing and I just wanted to uh, let you guys know that we're, I got online last night and I was looking up the, uh, I found the PDF for this thing. Uh, uh, downloaded that and I was looking through it and I was able to actually find the carburetor, uh, exploded view of the carburetor. So I was looking over that and uh, a lot of carburetors have this, but I didn't see one yesterday when I was poking around. But now that I've cleaned the engine up, I can see in there better. And sure enough, there's a drain uh, screw at the bottom of the bowl of the carburetor. So I'm kind of betting that the previous owner, uh, the son-in-law, didn't think to try that. And also there's a fuel line that runs from the tank, I think it comes out on this side, and it runs down along here and up to the carburetor. So that's probably full of old gas also. So what I'm going to attempt to do is use the fuel pump on the machine once I install the battery. And by the way, I went and bought a battery today, the proper fit one and the right cranking amps and all that stuff. Uh, so I'm getting ready to fit the battery in here. Uh, but first, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and unscrew this uh, drain plug on the bottom of the bowl. And I'm gonna pull you guys around here and let you look over my shoulder. Uh, but a, a lot of times, if you can avoid removing the carburetor, you know, do that. Uh, don't take the carburetor off. Don't tear into anything unless you absolutely have to. So I'm thinking this is, you know, this machine hadn't been sitting nearly as long as that little three-wheeler that I worked on. So I'm thinking, uh, it might just be that the, the bowl is full of uh, fouled gas and perhaps it's not too bad. That's what I'm hoping for. And uh, this line has probably got bad gas in it. So I'm hoping that I can pump that out through the system using the fuel pump. And that'll save me from having to take the carburetor off possibly. So, and even if I do have to take the carburetor off, it's just, I'm excited to hear the thing run and hear what it sounds like, hear what the engine sounds like. Because so far, all I've been able to do is pull this thing over by hand manually and it's not easy to do this thing it's a beast to pull over being a 500 cc so i'm going to pull you around here and set you up for uh to kind of watch what i'm doing i doubt you'll be able to see exactly what i'm doing but you'll get the idea okay let's crack this uh, screw loose here see if i can get my hand in there that's going to be the trick of this whole deal is it's not going to be easy to get to that little screw okay That ain't happening with that. The way that carb is moving though, it just gave me an idea. Maybe I can just loosen that, loosen these clamps up and twist the carb a little bit and break that thing loose. And that might, that might fix it right there. Let's try that. I think I'll be able to get to it from there a lot better. Oh yeah, there's nasty gas coming out of there. That's a good sign. Oh, I'm smelling the uh, tarnished gas big time. So we're, we're on the right track here. It's weird how things work out, but uh, 
when I was when I twisted the carburetor, I noticed this back clamp is loose back here. So that indicates to me that somebody's had this off and tried to squirt some starting fluid in there or something. And it was loose. Well, I checked this front one here and it looks to me like the bottom edge of the carburetor on the front is not setting inside of the rubber there. So it's got a it's got a weird pinch going on. And when I put it back together, I'm going to have to kind of pull this up and push it in to get it to line up right and make sure that that's not going to be an issue. And I'm going to have to watch the bottom edge of that and make sure that I've got it. You know, that boot, this rubber boot, that's essentially your intake manifold, this little piece of rubber that connects it onto the cylinder head there. Uh, if that's not lined up right and your carburetor is pushing down on the lip there, then it's sucking a bunch of air right there and that's going to throw it off, might not even allow it to run. So uh, right now I'm still draining. Uh, open it up a little more, see if anything else comes out of there. Uh, the way this one works, uh, you just open it up and there's a little vent there at the bottom and that's allowing that gas to drip out of there. Unfortunately, I can't show you that because of the, the camera angle, but anyways, guys, we're on the right track. Uh, next up, I'm gonna drop the battery in right here. Uh, you can see where I repainted everything down in there. And I just used some Rust-Oleum stove paint, uh, but I cleaned it up first with a wire brush and uh, blew it out with air, wiped it down. Uh, but if I see a little rust spot on something that I'm fixing to cover up, uh, then I would rather go ahead and uh, take precautions now and work on it now. So anyways, when we come back here in a minute, I'll have the battery in and we'll try to see if we can uh, get the fuel pump to come on and pump a little fuel out of that carburetor. All right, boys, we're on the right track, I believe. Boys and girls, I shouldn't be like that. There may be ladies out there wanting to learn about four-wheelers and working on them. So more power to you. I don't know about you guys, but I can feel the excitement building in the air as I get closer to uh, turning the key on this thing. So here we go. I'm getting ready to put this uh, new battery in. It's been charging for the proper amount of time. It's fully charged now. And I'm gonna carefully place that vent where it won't run down on any of my metal parts. I want it to drip right down, you know, and not hit anything metal because before I believe it was going down and hitting the battery tray there and that, that's probably what caused it to rust. So pay attention to that sort of thing when you're putting these together and you can save yourself some headache in the future. Uh, anyways, fix and drop her in, let's go. All right guys, it's the moment of truth and just to be on the safe side, if you're getting a brand new machine that's new to you, it's a good idea to have some sort of a fire extinguisher or like this stuff. And I turned my, I turned my water hose on back here behind me. And if I had to, I could run and grab another fire extinguisher. So uh, we've got the fuel bowl all screwed back on. Like I said, I screwed the clamps back on the carburetor, uh, put the hose back on that I pulled off. So it's time for the moment of truth. Let's see if we can get her to hit. chokes and a couple of now I noticed I noticed I have to keep holding the choke out because I don't know if there's something wrong with it or if that's just the way it's designed uh, but it doesn't stay out like I think it's supposed to so I'm going to hold that out so that it stays nice and choked and suck some fresh fuel up in that carb
Okay, next up, I'm gonna attempt to squirt some starting fluid up the throat of the thing. Uh, when you do that, you wanna hold the, hold the throttle open so that it gets past the, uh, the butterfly in there. So I'm gonna hold the throttle open and hopefully I got a nozzle with this, uh, with this starting fluid I got, but I'm gonna squirt a little, a couple of squirts of that in there and see if we can get her to hit off. Oh, 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 did you boys hear that? That gets my heart fluttering. I think my battery may be getting a little run down already because of cranking it over. Try her a few more times. I love hearing that sound though. That means it's gonna be a runner. I may still have to take the carburetor off yet, but uh, just hitting the choke there and doing it, it seems like it's wanting to fire. So I'm, if I can get it to do that enough times where I get enough fresh gas up in there, uh, even if it doesn't run today, maybe by setting in there overnight, that fuel will, uh, you know, uh, kind of clean everything up. Unfortunately, because of the way they made this air box back here, I can't really get my can in there like I'd like. Just double checking, making sure my fuel's on, it is. seems to be doing better and better as I go but now I'm gonna switch over to a little carb cleaner and see if I can get it to run on that just a little bit and I'm hoping that it's it seems to be running longer and longer so I'm hoping that it's getting some fresh gas up in the carb by now here she's trying to idle on her own I'm trying to suck the last little bit of that crappy gas out of there and just keeping her running that's what I wanted to hear yeah she's gonna be a runner
tell just by the feel it's still starving for fuel. And you can hear how it's kind of idling down. Sounds like it's about to die. Okay guys, uh, we're getting a little long on the video here, so we're going to have to call that good for this one. But I can tell this is a definitely a fuel problem because as I you know, remove the starting fluid and the carburetor cleaner, it slowly starts to die off. But I can tell also that I'm getting some fuel uh, flow and I'm getting throttle response at the low end. Now, when I try to hit it hard and rev it up high, it starts popping and backfiring like it's starving for fuel. So. All right, guys, I got cut off there, but I was saying that uh, uh, we're going to have to call that good for today because I'm losing my light. Uh, but I got this thing to running. Uh, it'll actually run uh, just on the – on. now I have to use the carburetor cleaner or the uh, starting fluid to get it started. But once I get it started, it's sitting there idling, so I can tell that it's burning up the fuel. Uh, it's consuming some fuel from the fuel bowl, so that's good. Uh, but, yeah, we're going to have to wrap it up here today, and uh, hopefully uh, tomorrow – uh, when I've got better lighting and stuff, I'll possibly either get into that carburetor. But again, I'm still thinking I may not have to. I'm trying to put that off to the last minute. So I'm fixing to do a hot soak. And that's what that is, is when you uh, start the thing up, get it running, and just let it idle. And squirt a bunch of carburetor cleaner down in the throat until the thing dies. And then just leave it alone and let it sit there with all that carburetor cleaner inside of the, inside of the actual carburetor. Uh, that's a hot soak since I've run the engine long enough that the engine's warm. Uh, everything should be warmed up and hopefully after letting set, letting that set overnight for about 24 hours uh, uh, or a little less. But tomorrow when I get out here and work on this, uh, hopefully that'll help get everything cleaned up and we'll be able to continue on. But we're making good progress. I got the thing to idle. So, all right, guys, I appreciate you stopping by and watching and hopefully this helps you out. If you've got a machine similar to this, uh, I've gone over it over and over like a broken record, but basically you just need to, a few things. You know, you need spark, exhaust, compression, and fuel. If you've got all those things, then you're going to have a running engine. So that's what we got here. Uh, it's sounding good. Uh, it sounds tight when it's running and everything, especially when I'm feeding it fuel. So I know that the problem we have here is a fuel-related issue. Worst case scenario, I have to buy a new carburetor for it, let's say. Uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. This thing looks really nice, at least from the exterior. And uh, as I was looking at this, I believe this might be a diaphragm type carburetor. So there's a possibility uh, that the diaphragm's bad inside of there. So I'm going to take a look at that. I think I can access that from just taking that top cap off. But I'm going to have to go in and look that up again on the PDF. But anyways, guys, until next time, uh, good luck on your projects and we'll see you later.